Oh, what an adventure! <laughs> Get lost with Google Maps. gear got here there's the three-way switch and all that in there now when the um, electrician gets here I made a, a little change to this I actually strengthened the back of Ziggy's kitchen there uh, on the outside and in there where the screws go on the inside with a well I think it's about um, a half inch on the inside and a quarter Fly on the outside here and I put a massive huge heavy duty steel hinge in there it's massive and uh, so all I've got to do is just undo this one bolt over here in the corner there it is over there yeah okay so all I do is just undo that one bolt and this whole thing just pivots open and gives me full access into there if I'm camping all I've got to do is take the fridge and freezer out which you all know those 35 litre Engel fridge and freezers it's not such a big big job um, now it is already wired so as soon as my battery comes back I can plonk uh, I can open this put the battery in hook the positive up down there hook the negative up they have got tape on the end of them I don't need them um, it's a muggy day today let me tell you so let's go in here and have a look okay now yeah my wiring does look a bit big in there and cramped and it's probably you know if this was a professionally made trailer bought off a trailer manufacturer that makes camper trailers and caravans um, you will not find wires like this in there. You will find wires that are just big enough to do the job. Um, you wouldn't be able to charge your lithium batteries one at a time like... Okay, now position one has a battery on it. So if I turn this to position one... Okay. I've just turned on that battery. These uh, wires all coming to the second battery, which isn't in here, are still dead. Right, and if I turn this oh, switch on over here, that's turned on, that's turned on power to the trailer. Okay, and you see this inverter that's in here. It's not rubbing on any of the wires at all, by the way. That inverter is a two kilowatt Grendel or something they call it. The company I think is in South Australia that imports them. Okay. Now my wife, uh, the good thing about that inverter is uh, the fans in it do not come on until the inverter reaches an internal temperature of 40 degrees Celsius. Okay, so my wife comes here. I mean the kitchen's all shut now. But as you can see, there's 13... 0.4 volts in that battery <coughs> the things with lithiums are the volts don't drop much which is why you really need to go off your consumed amps okay but all she's got to do to get power you hear that well, now the inverter's live um, when we eventually get this power point put in uh, she'll be able to plug in right here and power what she wants do that and the inverter's now off again <coughs> um, and it is a little bit of a reach in there to turn those switches to the on position however remember at the start of a trip, once they're on, they're on. Okay, unless I blow a main fuse or something like that, then I turn the red one off to um, uh, bung a new fuse in. Um, like, 
the wiring for my batteries I mean it's it's just huge compared to what you would find in a commercially produced trailer um, I tend to overbuild everything electrical my failure points are the fuses okay they are my building fa failure points I counted my fuses in this trailer okay I've got three down there uh, in that little fuse block there to the left side of my trailer I've got uh, I think four or five under here at the end of that and they're all fairly low amp fuses all fast blow okay I got either 10 or 11 fuses in this trailer and that's counting the, the three big ones up in there the two 80s the two 80 amp fuses um, one for each battery now those batteries are 100 12 100 so that means they're 100 amp hour 12 volts with 100 amp maximum draw continuous okay and I've got 80 amp fuses in there fast blow fuses in there because there's no way in the world I'm going to draw 200 amps um, I worked it out the max I'll be drawing is around 130 or 140 and I've got a 150 amp fast blow fuse in that one right at the top so the fuse block, the fuse block at the top is 100 and 50 amp and the two at the bottom are 80 amp now all, all everything in this trailer uh, except the inverter the uh, charge controller and the inverter but all the wiring like the switches like that red one's blue sea marine grade this uh, big white one's marine switch um, the fuse blocks are explosive proof blue sea fuse housings um, all right, and a lot of the stuff I've had sitting here for years, some of it I had to buy again, uh, or, or I had to buy. Um, I, that switch I bought twice because I ordered one from China and then um, they had that coronavirus and um, it just doesn't even look like coming. So I ordered that one there in New South Wales. It cost me a bit more, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, basically the... <coughs> my side the DC wiring's all finished all right <clears throat> when the electrician comes my mate Russ he's uh we'll, we'll open this back up again here I'll undo that 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 bolt there and have this all open and I can show you his inside but he's going to uh, run some wires in here and they'll come back and run around there and come and run along this bit of steel down here where those square things are to hold it and it'll disappear in here um, and you know him being an electrician he'll just wire in whatever he wants to wire in there it's, it's fine he knows um, the AC laws I, I don't know that much about, uh, well, I know how to do 240 volt electrical, but I'm not into the uh, legal side of it so much. I know what I am allowed to work on and what I'm not allowed to work on. I work on what I'm allowed to and I don't when I'm not allowed to. It's as simple as that. Um, so yeah, he'll, he'll run all those wires and then it'll be done. Um, the other battery is still on its way back by, by truck it's still on its way back to the eastern states um, hopefully you know that'll only take a week week and a half maybe and it'll be back here again we'll see um, as one of my I, I'm pretty sure he's a West Australian subscriber because well in the land to wait a while standing for Western Australia wait a while you know you know you gotta wait a while and that's exactly right that's exactly right so anyway that's what it looks like um, uh, the inverter it's what's called a wide bodied inverter um, it's got it's got a really wide body on it a um, lot more aluminium in it to help uh, spread the heat um, and and shed the heat that's why I went with a wide bodied one instead of a narrow one I mean I could have got 
a two kilowatt inverter, sort of almost half the, the width as that. Um, but then the fans are running all, all the time. In that one there, the fans won't come on. It's got two little fans in it and they won't come on until it hits 40 degrees C. And by the way, that brand of inverter has a really good name in Australia. Um, I'll write the brand name down somewhere if I remember. And if I don't remember, one of you will say, hey Chris, what's the brand of that inverter? Because I'll bloody forget. Um, so yeah, you know, I mean, even though, you know, so I could, if I, if I had to, I can use this. If one battery goes down, I can use it with one battery. You know, no worries at all because I've got that three-way switching up there and right now it's in position one. Um, well worth the effort of putting them in. And, and as my dad used to say, and as I say, if a job's worth, worth doing, it's worth doing well. All my cable ends are usually double crimped with a 10 ton hydraulic crimper. Um, I've never had any trouble with cra uh, cables. Uh, my, uh, all my nuts and bolts on all the fittings are torqued with a torque wrench. Um, and I've not had any trouble with loose nuts and bolts, but there's always a first time, which is why I say, please check them, you know, every now and then in, 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 um, yeah, if you own a caravan or a camper trailer, every now and then check your electrical connections, check your nuts and bolts, look for hot spots and, uh, fix it before it comes a problem. It's as simple as that really. But, uh, the weak spots I've engineered to my systems are the fuses. Um, I use all fast blow fuses. Um, they're just on the edge of the amount of power I pull out. And if I pull too m more than that or something goes wrong, they'll just bang, gone. And then I replace them. All right, so that's a quick look at the trailer. Um, this hinged idea came to me in a dream last night. And I told the missus about it this morning because I woke up and the first thing I did was scribbled it on a piece of paper. And I said, look at this dream I had last night. I said, do you think we got that hin a hinge down the shed? Anyway, we went down and had a look and we had this massive steel one that we've never used. I'm not sure where I scored that from. I, I might have even picked it up when I was dumping rubbish off at the rubbish tip. It might have been in somebody's interesting pile that I had a look at. I've got a habit of doing that. But anyway, I strengthened it up in there and there's just no movement at that in all with, with that hinge. That's just a massive hinge, uh, solid steel, probably two mil. Um, yeah, yeah, that was an awesome, that was awesome I had that dream. So now it's just made life so much easier. We just get the spanner or the socket, whoop, run that uh, nut out there and um, open it all just opens up like a big gate lets us into everything all right there you go have a look there you go okay there's no extra you know there's that's i mean it, it looks like there's a lot of wires there's not that many wires in there um it's just that in my trailer i don't hide wires <coughs> Whereas if you buy a new caravan or a new camper trailer, usually they put the wires inside the framing. They'll drill a hole there, pull all the wires through, and uh, why that's really good when it's new, um, especially in off-road trailers, it does lead to a lot of cable chaf chafing. Okay, and another reason my wires look so big is because they're double coated. They're double, they're, they've got two coatings of, um, plastic on them. Here, let me show you. Let me show you later here. Hang on a minute. Can you see that? Yes, you can see that. And this is the, uh, this is the brand name of the inverter. Seems I'm, I'm back this far. Okay.
all right they're made in china i think i'm not sure but the company that imports them i think they're built to uh, yeah to anyway the import company's in south australia i believe but they're like there's the specs and this is the uh, three-way switch okay and that that red thing is actually a lock so it locks wherever you leave it all right you can hear the air conditioners and everything it's not hot it's just real muggy and and humid so we run the air con conditioning inside to keep the house nice um all right that's it i'm not sure when Ralph is going to come down and do the wiring, I'm hoping on the weekend, but it might not be. Because, you know, he's a working man. Um, so, we'll see what happens. That's it. Keep safe, everyone. Bye for now.